Hey guys, this is Chris from Record Talk, and so this is another contest entry. But this is not going to be a short contest entry. This is going to be a long contest entry. If you're interested in short videos, wait until this Thursday. We're going to do five records, five minutes with a short theme. But today's theme is not short. So today's theme is based on a contest by TC at TKR Report, the Kirkham Report. Uh, so if you don't know TC... Uh, TC is a big fan of pop music. He's a big fan of top 40 music. He loves the charts. Um, and he loves cheesy music. No, that, that that's not my opinion. That's Richard McCook's opinion. Uh, so Richard McCook, who's a big pop music fan as well. I mean, he love, he's a big ABBA guy. Uh, he said TC's music was kind of cheesy. So I, uh, I'm having a little bit of fun with you, TC. I'm going to show a lot of cheesy records today. Um, I'm going to change some of your questions. I understand if I get disqualified, but let's get into the cheese. So we've got some cheese here. We got some Mexican style cheese. And of course, this is TC's third anniversary. Three is a magic number. So everything is based around the number three. So we got Monterey Jack. We got cheddar. We got queso. We got acidero. That's uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. That's, that's four cheeses. Okay. And so, well, let's, let me set that aside. Um, so when I was at the grocery store, I had to get the Sargento three cheese Mexican. So this isn't the Kroger brand. This is the expensive uh, brand name. This is like the audiophile grade shredded cheese here. But it's uh, queso, cheddar, and Colby Jack. And you might be saying, oh, Colby Jack, isn't that really two and a mix four? No, no, this is three cheese. So lots of threes involved with this particular video. And then I also got a um, thumbnail moment here. Three minute microwave cheese pizza. Again, it's the Kroger uh, store brand version of this. I bought this just for the video. How many of you have bought records just to show on YouTube? By the way, that's dumb. You shouldn't do that. You're gonna regret it the way I'm surely regretting this cheap frozen pizza. All right, so let's get into, he has a lot of questions. It's like a vinyl tag. And as I said, I'm going to change some of the questions. But his first question was to show our three most recent purchases. I actually had a recent day when I was out at some antique malls and I made several purchases and some record stores. I made several purchases that day. I'm choosing three of them from that day that are kind of cheesy. They're, these are all on seven inch singles. I know TC says albums. He said it could be albums, singles, CDs. So I'll be mixing and matching that. So of course we have Linda Ronstadt back in the USA. So if you watch my videos, you know when I find the uh, Living in the USA album with her roller skating on the cover. I love to show that. Well, what you don't find nearly as often is the single with the intact picture sleeve for the song Back in the USA. So I found that and I had to get it. Um, the Style Council, again, in America, it's not common to find Style Council singles, especially with their intact picture sleeve. And of course, this is Rob Walker type of music. And we really know that the Style Council is really just a cheesy version of the jam. And then finally, this uh, last one's not in a picture sleeve. So this is Denise LaSalle. She's the wife of Super Wolf. Um... And so Down Home Blues on uh, the Malico label. Uh, it's Mississippi-based soul label from the 1980s. And then we've got the cheesy X-rated version uh, on the flip side. Um, question number two. Show three albums from when you were three years old. For me, that's going to be the year 1972. And so what came out in 1972? K-Tell's. 22 explosive hits. I mean, this had to be the record of the year. I mean, look, you got Sammy Davis Jr. You got Olivia Newton-John. You got April Wine. You've got Derek and the Dominoes. Uh, you've got the Shy Lights. You've got James Brown. Um, you've got it all here. JJ, 22 explosive hits. Also, you've got the Osmonds, Crazy Horses. And, and look, Rainbow Proud, 1972. This is like the Osmonds, like heavy rock 
heavy psych album. At least I heard it described that way. So that's when I found it for a dollar. I bought it. And I'll be honest, I don't really like it. But it's kind of fun. And it's definitely a hard rock album by the Osmonds. It's definitely cheesy. And it came out in 1972. Elvis Presley, Burning Love and It's a Matter of Time. Intact Picture Sleeve, 1972. Um, and then his third question was to show three albums from when you were 13 years old in 1982. But I decided not to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to throw, I'm going to show three cheesy jazz albums. And so, um, Dixieland Jazz, Clarinets, Pete Fountain, Pete's Place. So we got we got the clarinet, we got the dude on the vibes, uh, we got the F Sheik of Araby. It's on Coral Records, I think, from the mid nineteen sixties. That's gonna be kind of cheesy. Then we got this Shearing and Hi Fi. Look at this classic late fifties space age uh, retro design on this album cover, which is really by far uh, the coolest part of this record and um, the back of it's a little bit messy looking but we'll do that and then how about some smooth stuff Earl Klug and Bob James with two of a kind there are a couple of aces they are two of a kind and I'll be back in a little bit with some more records because his contest goes on forever all right, so question number four was three albums from when you were 53 years old in my case, which would be the year 2022. Well, I'm just going to refer you to go uh, check out my best of 2022 video. And instead, I'm going to show you three songs all about cheese. So we have The Rainmaker, some good old roots Midwestern rock from 1986. Uh, these guys were from Kansas City, um, and Downstream was their hit, but they also had a song on their debut album called Government Cheese. You remember the, the joys of eating those processed, big Velveeta-ish government cheese blocks. And of course, 1989, Nirvana, they had their album, Bleach, and this penultimate song is called Big Cheese. And Ed's Redeeming Qualities. So quirky, childlike, folk alternative rock from 1990. And they have a song called Cheese Grater. So, yeah, you need to grate your cheese. And then I guess you put it on your toast. Uh, I guess the way that's the way they works. Uh, so question number five. His version was three albums that have the word or number three in the band or artist name. I've changed it to three CDs that are all about the cheese. And so, of course, we have Primus uh, from 1991. They were sailing the seas of cheese. And it looks like they were sailing the seas of nacho cheese. Um, I have a rather beat up old uh, version of this album, Les Claypool and the Gang. Jerry was a race car driver racing to uh, reach the seas of cheese. And then in Obscurity, 1992, the group Big Hunk of Cheese, they had a song called Prisoner of Cheese. They even put out their record, uh, they called it Jack Records. Uh, I guess Prisoner of Cheese was their single because they have the pasteurized edit. And so I had a summer job. One of my friends at the summer job in Yellowstone Park was going to school at Bowling Green State in Ohio. And I went and visited him, and this was a local band that he liked. And I somehow picked up a CD, and I've had it ever since. And then from 1994, we have Ween, Chocolate and Cheese. You may be noticing that I don't actually have the physical format of Chocolate and Cheese, which was one of the most tasteful uh, records ever made. Um, and so I looked online. Um, if you don't happen to own it, um, even used CDs are starting at $15, and used vinyl is at three figures, and that's even some of the recent reissues. Um, and so I kind of wimped out and went with String Cheese Incident, live at Bonnaroo, um, a CD I burned in probably 2011 or 2012. I went through a phase for a while of downloading a lot of 
live shows and burning them on the CDs. Um, and then uh, question number six was to show three albums or singles in your collection that have the word or number three in the title of the song. And this time I went ahead and stayed with the question, but I got to go pull one record for it. All right, so uh, these are all going to be singles this time. Uh, so we have Dawn on the Bell label from, I believe, 1970 with the song Knock Three Times. And then 1974, um, I don't think this was a hit. Uh, somebody named Donnie Fritz uh, was on Atlantic. This is a one of those stereo mono promos with the song called 300 Pounds of Hungry. Not hungry, but hungry. So you got the stereo on the blue side, and the mono is on the red and white side. And then finally, we have a 12-inch single. This is Bardot from 1987 with their song Three Time Lover. And so this is a 12-inch single. Look at, look, look at how cheesy uh, those young women are. 1987, high energy dance music. You've got the, we've got the European mix. We've got the circus mix. I mean, is it going to get any cheesier than that? I don't think it's going to get any cheesier than that. All right, question number seven. Three albums by three different bands that have just three members. And I went ahead and accomplished this. And I went ahead and accomplished this with... Um, with seven inch singles with picture sleeves. So first, and this has three in the name of the band as well, the Juliana Hatfield three with my sister. So I know that I love Juliana Hatfield and I know that TC loves the charts. And so you might be saying, well, what does Juliana Hatfield have to do with top 40 charts? Uh, she has nothing to do with top 40 charts. Well, this was an exception. No, we're not talking about the billboard main chart we're not talking about the dance chart we're not talking about the r&b chart we're not talking about the alter alter alternative easy listening chart we're talking about the modern rock chart so just about 30 years ago a little over 30 years ago september 11th 1993 juliana hatfield three my sister number one on the modern rock chart and it was squeezed in between a Red Hot Chili Pepper song, Soul the Squeeze, and the Blind Melon song, No Rain. And then you might be wondering, okay, well, where's Juliana at? Uh, we got two dudes wearing wigs. And so on the left, that's Todd Phillips, the drummer, staring at the hairy chest of the bass player, Dean Fisher, on the right-hand side. And, oh, okay, so there's Juliana uh, on the back. And it is on, for some reason... It was on gray vinyl back in 1993, and it is numbered as well. I have number 1255 out of 1500. Um, another band with the name number three in it is Timbuk3 with the future so bright I gotta wear shades. Um, and so there were three members of the band. Well, some of you might have thought it was a duo because they were basically the husband and wife team of uh, Pat McDonald and Barbara Coyman, uh, but they had a they had a drum machine doing the drums and the bass part. Uh, I, at some later point of time, they actually got a live rhythm section, but at this point, it was the two of them and their drum machine. And then, of course, uh, we have the Thompson triplets. Uh, okay, uh, so we have Alana Curry and Tom Bailey and Joe Leeway, the Thompson triplets. Uh, with their famous song, Doctor, Doctor. So, of course, the Thompson triplets are a three-person band. Uh, and question number eight, you were supposed to show three albums in your co a collection that were part of a three LP set. I could have shown you the Clash Sandinista. Uh, I'm betting a lot of people will show that if they do this contest. So I changed the question to three more cheesy picture sleeves. Um, and so, okay, we've got uh, Banana Rama Venus from, I believe, 1986. I mean, it's produced by Stock, Aitken, and Waterman. I mean, is it much more cheesy and chart-driven than S.A.W.? 
I mean, it's really just too bad that there were only two of those Reynolds girls, not three of them. Uh, Bananarama, of course, was better than the Reynolds girls. And so you've got Sarah and Shabon and Karen, uh, the members of Bananarama. Um, and then while we're showing cheesy uh, trios, I uh, wonder if TC has ever heard of the McCarters. And you're going, man, that's a lot of acid wash denim. And that's a lot of hairspray. And this looks like it came straight out of uh, my high school in 1987. This is a record from 1987. So um, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But if you're looking at this and you're go guessing that this is sort of lame, uh, very pop uh, inflected country music. Well, that's exactly what it is. So the three McCarter sisters, their names were Jennifer, Teresa, and Lisa. Uh, Teresa and Lisa were a couple years younger than Jennifer and were twins. And don't ask me to tell you which one is which because I have no idea. I, I literally only bought this because of look at all that acid wash. And finally, this is not a trio. This is only being shown because it's cheesy. So here comes the heartache. Did he call today by Dora Hall on Premore Records? Um, didn't have a date on it. I believe this is probably early to mid 1960s, but uh, that's a guess. So if you don't know the story about Dora Hall, she was this marginally talented singer, uh, but she had a wealthy husband. Her husband, Leo Holzman, uh, was the guy behind the Solo Cup Company. And he basically bankrolled her career. So she put out a lot of records. You could get them with solo cups. They even bought TV specials, variety specials uh, that she would host. And she's not really a very good singer. I see her records all the time. I never buy them, but I bought this one because I actually found it uh, with her picture sleeve. And just remember, so if you were ever buying those red solo cups for your kegger, you are helping to bankroll Dora Hall's music career. And so, and that takes us to question number nine. So TC wants us to give a shout out to three people, maybe encourage them to enter the contest as well. Uh, so the first one I'm going to go to is my buddy in Finland, Tommy, Tommy's Vinyl Knots. Um, if he does this, TC will definitely dig the Nordic Schlager, the Finnish Schlager, and maybe some of the other Nordic countries. Notice I did not call Finland a Scandinavian country, because it is not. Uh, Mark at Mad for Vinyl. I know he has tons of records. He has tens, tons of 7-inch records. Certainly he's got some cheesy stuff and some trios that he can show. And Boz at that vinyl channel. Again, he's a guy again with a lot of records, a lot of 7-inch records. He can probably dig out enough to get through this very, 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 very long contest. TC, I made it. I got all the way through your contest. I'm getting hungry. I'm going to go melt some cheese on something. Or maybe I'll make a real mistake and I'll actually eat this three-minute microwave pizza. Or maybe I'll just think about finding records for my next video. Five records, five minutes with a short theme.